Hey, y'all. Welcome back to episode 28 of the Late Night Vision Show. I'm Hans, and as always, i got my co-host, Jason Robertson. How you doing, bud? Man, I am doing good, Hans. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. We have, uh, we've got a great show. There's been some, uh, I know, a lot of anticipation uh, on my behalf for this show because I've been excited about testing this product, and we're going to get to that very soon. Uh, but man, we've got a lot of we got a lot of good things to talk about, and some upcoming things too that we want to share with everybody. We do, you know. Next week, uh, I think we're going to have a, a special show, and I want to be clear about this show. It is uh, against my will. Uh, <laughs> it is it is Thanksgiving week, and yeah. uh, I, I asked Hans a couple weeks ago. I said, "So you know, we're we're to twenty something shows. Everything's going good." Uh, so I guess Thanksgiving, you know, we're going to take the week off, right? Uh, why would we no. do that? <laughs> I was no. like, it's Thanksgiving. I mean, we've, we're going to be spending time with our families. He's like, well, yeah, but we don't record till 10 o'clock at night. What are you going to be doing at 10 o'clock at night? They're going to be asleep. Yeah. We can record a show. I'm like, come on. So. All the people out there that send us emails and thank us for all the stuff uh, that they get to listen to on those long road trips. You know, we got people listening to this podcast back to back in their trucks and cars. And man, what what day uh, are people on the road almost the most? And gosh, that's got to be around Thanksgiving, right? It's gotta Traveling. Be. It's got to so be. We gotta do, so we got to do. We got to do the show. We're going to be working on Thanksgiving for y'all, just for y'all. And uh, we've got something fun. Uh, we're going to do obviously Thanksgiving being all about the family and bringing the family together. Uh, well, we're going to bring uh, both Jason and I, a major part of our family. We're uh, Somehow we got the boneheaded idea, and I know it was mine, but we're going to have the wives on the Late Night Vision Show podcast next week, and we're going to have them do a little trivia game, aren't we? I, I tell you what, I was walking out of the house tonight to come up here and uh, record this podcast, and my wife says, so are Crystal and I still going to be on the show next week? And I said, yes. And she goes, are you going to tell us what we're talking about? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, that y- y'all need to know, too. We hope this thing, we, we get this thing pulled off because getting these ladies to agree to this was oh, like it pulling was teeth. And here's the worst part is that they didn't want to do it because they're just, oh, we're not going to get on there. Whatever. Then when they found out that we we're going to video it and put it on YouTube, it was like, oh, Oh my goodness no, no you that, can't video me i'm like oh boy here it we has go. been a struggle the last several days talking about this I, i've got her she really doesn't have a choice at this point because <laughs> now i'm telling everybody so we got to do it but right. yeah she's she wants to know what it's about but what we're going to do uh, as you know listeners to this show uh, jason and i uh from the time that we wake up in the morning to the time we lay our heads on the pillow at night we are either talking about hunting, thinking about hunting, testing stuff, using stuff. We do this all day, every day. And I'm going to tell you, um, we're going to see how much our wives know about what we do and and some of the stuff that we use. We're going to ask some, uh, you know, hog hunting, coyote hunting related questions to our wives. And we're going to see uh, how many correct answers they can come up with. And this should be interesting because I'm going to tell you right now, uh, my wife uh, probably knows about as little as anybody about this kind of stuff. And uh, it's going to be funny to see what she comes up with some of these uh, answers. I'm, I'm fully convinced that uh, uh, my wife, she, you know, she hears me talk about it enough every day that she's going to come in with extreme confidence on a lot of oh. answers and be completely wrong. But <laughs> well, That's what we're counting on. Exactly. I hope counting. so. It's going to be fun. We'll see. Let, let's hope it all pans out. But I tell you what, I got some more uh, big news for the Late Night Vision show. Uh, we got the email confirmation that not only am I going to the SHOT Show representing Outdoor Legacy, uh, as I do every year in Las Vegas in January. Uh, the Late Night Vision Show will be there represented, and uh, uh, the Hans ETX YouTube channel will be represented as well. My uh, good buddy here, Hans, and his wife are, are in. Uh, I got them badges. We got that email today, and so uh, we, are, we are all going to be out there. Yeah, we're going to be... Uh... Uh, we're going to be doing an episode, uh, uh, you know, filming an es- episode out there for the late night vision show. See, here um, he goes again, committing to something three months away. You know how crazy it's going to be in Vegas every year. I always say these things I'm going to do and never get done because we're too busy. And he's committing us to recording the show on video. That's the way, 
that's the way that's the way I can get get this thing locked down. We we got to promise the promise the listeners. But yeah, we're going to be doing something related to the shot show out there. Uh, we're going to be wearing a bunch of different hats just because, like Jason said, he's going to be representing outdoor legacy gear and the late night show. I'll be representing the the Hans ETX YouTube channel uh, and the late night vision show. So what we're and we, outdoor what, legacy and outdoor legacy. Absolutely. So now I've got, I've got three different hats. I got that's right. <laughs> so, that's right. Three hats. That's a lot of different business cards, man. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you're going to be a busy guy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're excited about that. Bringing you that episode and, uh, man, there's no bigger show on earth than the shot show. And so no. we're going to get to see and put our hands on all the new stuff. And more importantly, let all of you out there, all the listeners know, uh, if anything new is out there, what's great, what uh, you know, what we can expect, and that's kind of where uh, we're we're going to get some of this information coming out for 2019. So it's going to be a great deal for all of us. I think so, and you know, the shot show is exciting. I don't want to talk about it too much right now. It's it is uh, uh, well one two two and a half months away. Not not that far. It'll be here soon, but I don't want to plug it too much. We'll, we'll leave some of that for when we get closer to it and and talk a little bit more about what it is. Or some people would say, I don't know what the SHOT Show is. Well, we'll talk about that some more. But it is going to be uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great for uh, the Late Night Vision show as well. So we're really excited about it. And, uh, you know, if you want to stay in touch with us and, and keep up with what's going on, obviously we want you to listen to the podcast, new episodes uh, every Thursday, even sometimes against my will on holidays. But we're, we're putting them out there. And don't forget that you can find us on YouTube. I'm talking to more and more people Mm -hmm. every day that call me to talk about scopes and they say uh, they don't even they don't even consider this like something they would listen on their phone in their truck. They say, man, I watch y'all's podcast uh, every week. And so uh, that's just the way they view it. So don't forget that you can always check us out on YouTube and uh, watch or listen there. I know a lot of guys tell me that they don't have time to always watch, but they'll click it open on YouTube when they're at work or sitting there at their desk. And even if it's minimized it, but they're listening to it that way. Well, so, so check I'm, us. Well, I'm going to tell you, you don't want to miss next week's episode on YouTube. So definitely check that out on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's going to be a hit. So yeah, exactly. And, and as always, you know, you can, you can find the late night vision show on Instagram and Facebook, uh, both of those places, it is growing, and we would love to have you follow, like, share, whatever you can do for us there, and as always, please call and leave us voicemails with feedback, show, suge- sh- how do I say it, <laughs> show <Spit> it <laughs> suggestions, and, you uh, it up again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show suggestions, and uh, that voicemail number, nobody's going to answer. Uh, so just call that and leave the voicemail, and we might play it on the show. It's 903-833-4461. You can do the same thing by sending us emails. We have a few guys who email us a lot and give us a lot of suggestions and feedback, and we appreciate it. So we'd love for you to do the same thing. And that email address is the late night vision show at gmail.com. Make sure you put the, the late night vision show at gmail.com. And if you want to find Hans, uh, YouTube is the place to be. Uh, he is uh, well known there, uh, gets tons of views on his videos. He puts new videos out every week. So go find him, subscribe, and go find him on Instagram as well. A same exact thing for Outdoor Legacy. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. YouTube's a big place. Uh, we've got uh, you know a lot of content there, and we're always trying to, to add more. And so go uh, check us out there. Most yep. importantly, OutdoorLegacyGear.com and the phone number 877-350-1818. And I will just tell you, it is that time of year. It is extremely busy. And everybody is looking to buy night vision and thermal, and we're going to stay busy. Uh, we plan to. All goes well for the next, you know, probably two to four months. So it is the busy time of year. If you call and I don't answer, leave a message. Bear with me. I will call you back, and I'll be glad to, to give you any advice and any help and suggestions that well, I can. I can tell you it's definitely the busy time of year because uh, I used to talk to you several times a day, and now I'm lucky if I get to – talk to you a couple times a day and it, well, it well my wife was, feels the same way so you're yeah in good exactly company. 
and, and I'll call Jason. And he'll say uh, after a minute of being on the phone, "Oh, got a work call going. I gotta, I gotta go." You see and, where you uh, rank, real quick. <laughs> well, you know, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, but last week's episode, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, the best handheld digital and thermal units under a thousand dollars in our opinion of what we thought and what we tested. And we got some great response from some, from people that were out there that are right there in the market looking and say, Hey, I'm glad somebody's finally talking about something, uh, you know, in the, in the, you know, that thousand dollar or under price range. Yeah. And I got a couple emails with some feedback. One of them was directly, um, about that show. And I wanted to read it cause I thought it was a, a really good email. It's from a listener and a customer of mine. His name is David. And he says, Hey guys, I just listened to your podcast episode number 27 on the way to work this morning. And I have to agree with you about the site mark signal. I did a ton of research on handheld digital night vision, decided to email Jason on what he recommended. He re- rec- recommended two models, the pulsar and the signal. So I decided to go with the Signal, and uh, he got me a great deal. And I have to say that it has far exceeded my ex- expectations. I can sit on the highest part of my ranch and easily see four to 450 yards with the illuminator set to high. I spent a weekend ranging and marking all my yardages, so I'm not guessing anymore on distance. I found the illuminator set on low will easily let me see up to 100 yards. I only have three issues, and they're small. First is the battery life, and he goes on here and he talks about the different battery life. He says that uh, with good rechargeables, he's getting four to four and a half hours max, and that's a really long time. I was surprised to hear that. He says with Energizer Lithiums, he gets around uh, two and a half to three. He said, I wish it had better battery life, but that is just the way it is. Uh, second is what Han said about it starting out with four and a half power. I really wish it was starting out at two and a half power with maybe three magnification levels going up to nine. Third, the display is really bright and it resets to the highest setting when the batteries are changed. And he goes on here to say that it's it's so bright sometimes if he doesn't turn it down that you know it hurts his eyes and causes some some you know what we like night blindness or whiteout. So he says he has to turn it down. And uh, it's fine after that. He says, other than that, it's great. It streams to my wife's phone so she can uh, see the action. And the kids love watching it on the iPad. Keep up the great show. Have a safe and blessed week. So, David, we really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, he's exactly right. I think that those things he mentioned uh, are, are great. I really, to be honest, didn't know, had never paid any attention to screen brightness reset when you took the batteries out, I mean, I believe him. He's been using it uh, for. I mean, he bought this from me way back, so uh, I am. I'm sure he knows, but I didn't know that. The batteries, yeah, I, I, he's right. I mean, it eats batteries. I think all these <laughs> units pretty much eat. You know, eat batteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that's anything surprising, but but he is right about that, and uh, you know, he agrees with Hans on the magnification and. Uh, I don't disagree, but I want to disagree because it's Hans. So you know, well, you whatever. disagree. You disagreed last week. A I don't bit, disagree with like, David because he's my customer, and the customer well, is say, almost always right. And yeah, so yeah. yeah, you disagreed a little bit last week on the magnification. I'm just glad that David uh, was on my side and agreed with me on that on the magnification yeah. being a tad bit high, but uh, still good nonetheless. I'm going back through here. I'm just trying to find if he said anywhere, like I agree with Jason. I don't remember. Him, so <laughs> I don't, I don't remember that, but I remember. So. Yeah. I remember this email. It's not in there, but it was a good yeah, email okay. for him. Thank you, David, uh, for sending that in and for listening to the show. It was, we got one more email this week that I thought was worth uh, highlighting and bringing up. We got a lot of emails this week, but this is just one that I wanted to mention it. it uh, I thought it was kind of humorous and it, it made my day. This is from Jeff. Jeff said, I just wanted to drop y'all a line and thank y'all for doing the podcast. I haven't been feeling this whole work thing today with the weather as nice as it is, and it's been opening weekend down here. So I've been killing time all day listening to old podcasts that I missed. I started hog hunting earlier this year, and I'm hooked. I've been drag racing pretty much my whole life and have drove some really fast cars with over 3,000 horsepower and capable of running well over 200 miles an hour in a quarter mile. I never thought I would find something that gives me an adrenaline rush like launching one of those cars and pulling over three G's until I looked through a thermal scope (laughs) in the black of night and saw a big group of hogs. Thanks for all you do for us newbies for this disease called hog hunting. So I I got a kick that uh, 
uh, he says going 200 and a quarter mile pulling three G's. The only thing that uh, he can find that rivals that's looking through a thermal at a group of hogs on a black night. I like it. Yeah, and I'll add something else to that, and that's stalking up on a 200 plus pound hog in the dead of night mm-hmm. and getting up within about 25 yards of it. I, there's nothing that makes your heart your heart uh, thump and your knees uh, shake a little bit. Than, than doing that so that's and you that's better awesome. be a darn good shot <laughs> better be a good shot better be yeah. a good shot well thank you jeff that's a great email and thank you for listening man it, it but I, he's he did say something about the weather this that email must have come a, a little while back because i'm gonna tell you i'm never gonna complain about being hot mm-hmm. ever again because mm-hmm. i went outside yesterday last night for about 10 minutes and uh boy i was uh i came in i was a popsicle my well, uh, i'm gonna tell you something if anybody uh, says that you know we don't get cold weather uh, when I was just coming up here to do the podcast, uh, it was, I know the, the northern northern guys are going to make fun of me, but it was lightly sleeting and snowing here in East Texas in November. Can't believe it. I heard we set some records today. for, for It didn't stick. It was all <laughs> melting before it ever hit the ground. But it was. There were, there were flakes coming down uh, lightly. And uh, I didn't didn't let my kids know because they'd have been jumping out of bed to go see it and have you know be all disappointed. But so yeah, yeah it is. It's been cold and and so it's been been nice. It does does feel like uh, good good hunting weather though. It is, yeah, it is. So uh, thank you everybody for the emails. Keep sending them in, man. We love reading them. There's a good chance if you send one in, it's going to be read on the air. Uh, especially for the ones that agree with me and disagree with Jason, you're definitely being bumped to the top of the list as far as email or voicemails, just letting you know. (laughs) But uh, this week, so last week we talked about the best, uh, uh, you know, in our opinion, the best digital thermal handheld units under a thousand dollars. This week we are lucky enough to be testing out and reviewing one of the best uh, thermal handhelds uh, really in the market today. And I want to thank uh, Envision, for sending us the Envision Atlas. And uh, this is a, a thermal handheld, uh, really it's a, a monocular slash binocular, something Bi- like that. Bioculars. Right? Bioculars, man, it's even got its own fancy name. Bi-ocular. Uh, and we, we got a chance to test this out. We've had it for uh, quite a long time. Too and, long, uh, we're, we're sorry, we're, we're sending too it long. back. Thank <laughs> you. We're sorry, thank you. Envision. Yeah. Sorry, Envision, and thank you at the same time. But we're, we're excited about reviewing this and talking about it, giving us our thoughts, because this is, uh, you know, this is on the, uh, you know, one of the best thermal uh, handheld units out there on the market. So we, last week, we kind of focused on, on stuff that was uh, less expensive. Now we're, we're going up there to the, the higher end brand stuff. So we're going way up. And, yeah. and now I want to be clear. We think this is one of the best. We're not we're those. not ready to go out and say this is the best yet. We will do a few more reviews, and uh, in time, we'll probably choose a winner, and we'll go down with, with what we think that is. I do think this is definitely on the short list uh, for that go-round. But, uh, yeah, it is the Envision Atlas, and I want to talk to you and just give a little bit of the specs on this thing. And I'll go ahead and give you the price. It's it's $56.95, $5,695. So it is definitely on the upper end. And I know there's guys right now that are listening going, who in the world has got $6,000 to spend on something handheld? I understand it. I get it. And, uh, you know, I, I wonder who has the money to buy an $80,000 pickup truck, but guys do it every day. So, you know, uh, there, there's, there are definitely guys out there who uh, are going to be in the market for this. And this is a, uh, an excellent optic. We're going to get into it. I do want to just kind of read some of the specs on it here. I made a list because I don't want to uh, forget anything, which I am known to yeah. do. And uh, real yeah. quick for those watching on uh, or listening on the podcast, if you want to see this unit, hop over to YouTube, watch the video because I'm I have this unit in hand, and I'm going to be showing it while uh, while we're talking about, yeah. it, so you get to see it visually. And and we will be adding this uh, as an item for sale on Outdoor Legacy Gear here uh, probably this week. So just FYI, if uh, I mean it's available now, we don't have it loaded on the store, but we will uh, maybe by the time this podcast airs. So, all right, back to the Atlas and the specs. First and foremost, it's running a 640 by 480 12 micron core. Um, This is an extremely high-end thermal core, and the image quality is is off the charts. And we're going to get into a little more of that. But I I want you to know when you hear 640 12 micron, 
this is this is this image quality is right there with uh, you know the best of the best in the consumer market for thermal. It's a 60 hertz refresh rate. It's got a 50 millimeter objective lens, and it's got a 2.5 optical magnification with up to a 10x digital zoom. It will take still images and record those internally. Uh, then it's got a transfer cable that you can pull those off and put them on your computer. And at the same time, it has a place to plug in a video out cable and you can plug it into something like the UNV MDVR to record video uh, out of. Uh, it has got a, this is unbelievable. I did not test this. I'm just going to read this spec. It says that it has a human size detection range of 1.25 miles. That's insane. And well, if there's a hog at a 800, I'll take 800 yards. I'm just going to, you know, try to see if I can see today. Man, I would love to see, <laughs> well, I'd love well, to see a hog that, I, you know, try to detect one at 800 yards. That'd be awesome. Well, but, here in East Texas, if I could find 1.25 miles clear <laughs> to, to see in any one direction anywhere, that far, exactly. I would have tested this. But I don't think there's anywhere within, uh, you know, a couple hours of here that I could, well, I could yeah. see 1.25 miles. That's true. Even on the roads, you know, on the paved roads yeah, and county roads, it's it. it's not even a one point miles flat no. stretch. Road no, I can see. get up. I can get up on a big hill. I mean, we've got some big outlooks, or, or you know, just where you get way up and you can look from you know half the county. But I, you know, I'm just looking at trees out there. I don't think there's anything I'd see at one point two five miles. But that that's crazy. It, it also moving along here. It takes three CR one two three A batteries. Um, I found the battery life to be pretty good on it. And it takes, uh, oh, it's a uh, IPX67 rating. Now, what that is, is the IPX67 uh, includes dust and water. So it's uh, fully submersible, three foot for 30 minutes. Um, so, you know, you're good on the waterproof. And then it's also uh, dust proof. So it, it is does have a dust rating, so you don't have to worry about that as well. So dust, dirt, water, yep. they got you covered. It has a rubberized housing and uh, it's a definitely a, a tough unit. I do want to mention, uh, you know, Hans said, you know, kind of a binocular, binocular. Uh, for those of you have, who haven't seen it and are listening to the podcast, I want to describe it. Uh, basically, what you have is a the 50 millimeter objective lens, a single lens, and then you do have two eyepieces. And each one of those eyepieces are looking at their own independent display. And that display uh, is you know they're they're both produced by that single objective lens, so it is called a biocular technically. I mean you know in in general terms we can call it a binocular, but that's not what it is because it doesn't have two objective lenses, each going to independent eyepieces. So it's a biocular, and um, anyway that's that's something a little bit different because as you know most uh, almost all there's there's a few exceptions of the uh, handheld thermal units are monoculars. They have a single eyepiece with a single objective lens. And so, the, I'm sorry, well, yeah, that's right. Single eyepiece, single objective lens. So this one's a little bit different. So let's jump right into the reviews uh, of this thing after we've been been using it. Uh, what are you thinking? What's the, what's the first thing you've got to say about it, Hans? amazing picture really mm -hmm. amazing picture uh, you know you can tell right when you get it out you put it up to your face well I, I'm gonna tell you my experience uh, as somebody that's going for from a standard monocular one eyepiece one objective lens uh, when you hold up this uh, this biocular to your eyes and you're looking through both eyes through it uh, man, you almost feel like you're at a movie theater, don't you? It, it, it is. It is very, very different, it and is. that that can be good and bad. I yeah. mean, there there's some good and bad there. It's it takes a little bit of getting used yeah, to. Yeah, um, I I will admit you do have to get used to it because I'm used to walking and and using the monocular at the same time, so I can see out of my left eye and through my right eye. I'm looking through the thermal. Well, you know, you're looking through both eyes. You take it away from your face, and your eyes have to adjust back to the darkness. Hang on. Tell, tell them what you did with this. I tell am. Them the I'm to it. Last night, I called Jason, and I said, I flat out plumb walked right into the back of my trailer. I have a trailer hooked up to my truck, 
with a four wheeler on it. And I walked smooth into that sucker <laughs> and my, you know, cause I was walking with that, uh, uh, biocular and I took it down away from my face. My eyes hadn't adjusted and man, I, my shin, I hit my shin on the license plate, hit my thigh on the, <laughs> on the side of the corner. Oh man. I, I I'm getting too old to be doing walking Gosh. into stuff like that without getting any pain, but occupational yeah, that, hazards. I, that was, uh, that was it's something I had to get used to, but man, <clears> you know, when you just, talk about what you notice using it first is just the great image that it produces it really does it is a legit uh you know great thermal image that it produces. look i'll say it uh, let, let's say what it is it's an image that is as good as the trigicons it's i mean that's yeah. that, that's what it is i mean it's I, uh, uh, and i believe it's using that same uh bae core Yep. Uh, that's yep. my understanding that it is. So, uh -huh. yeah, it, it's it's got the same core, and it is a Trigicon image, and I think everybody <laughs> knows, and, and I think, you know, even the Envision guys would admit it, that, that Trigicon sets the standard or has set the standard in this industry. Um, you know, there may be maybe getting some rivals now with Envision and a few other people, you know, kind of moving in here in their territory, but well, it is it is that good. I mean, it, it is, is unbelievable. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, a buddy in my we went hunting and we were out uh, just kind of scanning and looking for some hogs and we were on a hill and my buddy's like, look over there. I see something. I can't really tell what it is. It was about 300 to 350 yards, maybe 325. And uh, I was able to ID it. I ID a rabbit at over Gosh. 300 yards. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. Yeah. Usually with the, you know, other types of uh, thermals and stuff, you will just see like a little white or black dot you know, whatever you have right. it on white, hot or black hot, you'll just see a dot or something like that. And I was like, Nope, I see it's ears. And there it is hopping off. <laughs> you know, it was totally, you could tell from with that, uh, the envision Atlas, it was a, a rabbit at 300 yards. So man, I'm going to tell you, that's, uh, that's crazy. It, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. And, and, you know, I know that probably a lot of y'all get tired of hearing me say this, but it's just, it's just, I'm using this stuff here on my own property and you know the furthest that i can really see on my place here is about 450 to 500 yards and so i, I saw uh coyotes you know, deer uh, hogs and i'll tell you a funny story so when when uh, the guys over at envision sent this out to us um they said hey would y'all want to you know demo this thing and look at it and we said sure and you know i told them I said, we'll, we'll look at it and we'll see what we think. And if we like it, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it on the, the podcast and do whatever. And they didn't have any expectations. They didn't require us to do anything. I want to be clear on that. We said, yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. And so we got it and, or I got it. And as soon as I got it, man, I had hogs covering me up every night. There were hogs all over. It was awesome. And I start digging in the box and I can't find the video recording cable. And I'm like, what in the world? And so, I, you know, I, I can't figure it out. I'm thinking, I mean, I, there's this cable in there, but it wasn't the right cable to record video. So I, I finally got a hold of the guys over there and they're like, oh, we thought that was in the box. We're sorry. So no problem. They drop one FedEx should be here in two days, uh, a week and a half. It didn't show up. I hadn't seen it. And, you know, I'm emailing them. I haven't seen this. It got lost. Uh, the, the guy that I've been dealing with, super guy, he goes, I spent four hours on the phone with FedEx for them to finally say, sorry, we lost it. So they had to FedEx another one out. Oh, and uh, it, for whatever reason, seemed to take a day or two longer than it should. No joke. The day that I got the video cable, I hadn't seen a hog since. I mean, they just <laughs> disappeared. So uh, I don't know. This this thing may be unlucky to have around. I'm not. I can't prove that yet. We'll see what kind no, of luck Hans has had. Mean, but no, it doesn't mean the unit's unlucky. It just means the cord's unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> just the cord. Don't yeah. Don't get the don't get the recording yeah. cable. But no. So I used it. Uh, I did have it a, a, a good while, longer than than we you know they intended for us to have it and. Again, they're not upset about it. It was just a matter of, you know, that, that cable getting lost. And so uh, we've had it for, for well over a month. And it is, it's extremely impressive. I, uh, impressive. Uh, I've used it every single night uh, that I had it and I use it a lot. And I've got to tell you, I'm a fan. I mean, I like it. Now, I'm going to give you my pros and my cons of, of what I think. I think the image quality, again, I mean, uh, short of, you know, one of the Trigicons, I just don't think there's anything else out there that's going to compete with it. Um, FLIR doesn't have anything to compete with it in a handheld. Pulsar doesn't have anything. Um, you know, 
ATN doesn't have anything. It, it's it is in a, a very limited cl limited class uh, that you can get to compete with this. And I'd say for this price, there's there's nothing that's going to do it. Now I, I shouldn't say that Pulsar doesn't have anything. You know, Pulsar does have the accolades. Uh, they're handheld biocular units as well, but they don't they don't have this 12 micron core and this is it is that much better it is crazy so yeah identification range extremely long i've been blown away with how far i can clearly identify deer from hogs and uh you know coyotes and, and cows calves all that sort of thing so very impressed with that um, I, I like uh, there's some the the features there on uh, the kind of the way the button configuration is you can change some brightness and some things quickly uh, it, it feels really good in your hand um, i like the neck strap you know again that's more like what you would think from traditional binoculars uh, it's i know you're going it's a neck strap but i mean it's just a different way to hold it whereas what i'm used to with monoculars is either no hand strap at all or like the pulsar helions you have the you know the velcro hand strap kind of like a camcorder would have and so Wearing these things around your neck is just a totally different experience than having something that is strapped to your hand or maybe no strap right. at all. So, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I think it's worth mentioning as silly as it sounds. Well, it's just, a, you know, a strap around your neck. It just it's a different experience. It's more like using binoculars. Right. And so I really do. I like that. Uh, I would say that the controls and everything, I mean, it's all fine. It works. It's great. It, it does what it's supposed to do. I don't have anything negative to say so about those, so I don't want to just keep hammering saying it's great. I will say there are some things about it that I would like to see improved, and I think that they're they're minor, but they're there, and so I'm going to mention them. One, I think the menu system is, uh, I had one complaint with this, and it wasn't something that once I set it up, I never went back to it, so it didn't really matter, but what happens is, is when you go into the menu, you the screen goes black. You're just looking at the menu. So it's not like the menu comes up and it's sort of opaque and I can see through it and see the screen or it's not like the menus on the, the, you know, the left side like some of the other brands do so that I can still see. So when I get in there and I make a change, so let's say that I want to go in and, and change some of the manual settings on for the image quality, I have to make that change back out of the menus, then look at it. And uh, InVision may tell us there's some other way I was missing to do it, but I couldn't find it. So going into the menus, I, I again, it was a, a little bit of a pain, I thought, not being able to see live the changes I was making. But, you know, the first night I got it, I played with it, I set it up, going back and forth in those menus, and I never changed it again. So it's not like that's something you're going to be doing every night. You can change the magnification uh, very easily right there, you know, on the top button. So no big deal there. And then I think the only other thing that I can think of that it's going to be a, you know, a personal opinion of like it, love it, don't like it, hate it. And, uh, you know, I don't hate it. Uh, I think I like it okay. And that's just the fact that it does have the two eyepieces. Um, it, it takes some getting used to. And I know that's something when I first got it, I told Hans, like, man, I don't know. I mean, these, these two eyepieces, I'm not sure. We joked about it a while ago. And I know that he's had it for a while, not, not near as long as I did. So uh, he's still going to be using it here uh, in the coming days. So he's going to get a little more used to it, I imagine. But that's something if you're not used to, uh, you know, looking through two eyepieces, I just think it's going to be a little strange. For spotting, that's what's all you're doing. You're not shooting. It's just a handheld unit. I think that I like it. I'm used to it. I think it would be really ideal for guys who are setting up, whether it be in a stand, whether it be on a set for, co you know, calling coyotes that, you know, you're setting there and you're not doing a lot of walking around. Um, I do th think for myself, doing a lot of walking, a lot of moving, being able to throw a single eyepiece up and like Hans said, continue walking, there is an appeal there. But I know that a lot of people 
don't hunt the way that we do. And this wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, I used it walking around. You throw it around your neck. Again, it's it's not bad. It's right there. It's easy to drop it and forget about it around your neck uh, when you're walking. Sometimes that is a complaint I have about traditional handhelds is whether it's strapped to your hand or no strap at all is what in the world do I do with this thing? And, you know, when, when I get ready to shoot or I get up, you know, close to the hogs or whatever and I don't want it, um, then it's like, well, I got to put it in a bag. I got to cram it, try it in my pocket, you know, coat pocket somewhere. And so I think it, that's a trade-off. Uh, I think that for a lot of guys, outfitters, uh, again, people that are doing uh, more still hunting and, and not uh, moving around, I think the two eyepieces would probably be, you know, uh, something very appealing. So, anyway, that's my two cents. Uh, what do you well, think, Hans? Agree, disagree? I got a bone to pick with you because mm. I specifically before the show, we spoke about, I, I, he said, you know, let's go over this. I said, no, I don't want to tell you my likes and dislikes. Cause yeah, we did. We want, did not talk before the show about, yeah, that's I right. Said I didn't want to inter- influence your thoughts on it. And so we're not going to mm-hmm. talk about it. Well, that's right. you took away one of the biggest things that I thought would, uh, would serve very well to change. And that was the menu, uh, set up. You know, I think yeah. the buttons on top were laid out just fine. It was easy to figure out after a while, just playing with it. But yeah, going to the menu when it goes completely black and you, you can't see the adjustments that you're making to the picture uh, in live action, you have to switch back and forth. It was a little cumbersome and, um, and not the end of the world, but uh, definitely something that could be approved of, upon and, and moving forward in future models. But uh, a minor thing, but definitely uh, would like to see that change. The other uh, bone I want to pick, well, not really a bone to pick with you, uh, about the walking with it. I can, you know, I did walk with it. You saw what happened to me, or you heard what happened to me. But don't let anybody, don't let that influence your decision to buy this unit because I'm pretty clumsy and stuff like that happens to me all the time. No matter if it's daylight, darkness, uh, if I've got, you know, whatever going on. But uh, yeah, holding it up at the same time, uh, it's it would be difficult to walk down some of the trails that we're walking down with holding up something like that over both eyes, but it's like anything yeah. else getting used to. I want to say something else too. I had a, uh, I had a, a, you know, a guy I was talking to this week and he's probably listening to this podcast. And so a really nice guy. We're talking about some, uh, some Trigicon scopes and, and a lot of different things. And he said, you know, I listen to y'all's reviews and I, I watch Hans and I watch you. And he goes, sometimes I just feel like, you know, y- y'all aren't really, you know, telling all the negatives. And he was asking about a particular scope. And he said, I just feel like, you know, y- y'all could say more negative things about it and this and that. And oh, gosh, I was hearing him out. And he, he mentioned this particular scope uh, that we had done some reviews on and we had talked about. And he said, you know, you, you just didn't have anything bad to say about it. And I said, hey, understand. I mean, I appreciate the feedback. I said, you know, through your research, what have you found that's negative about that scope? And he said, well, nothing, but I just wish that, and I was like, so, okay, no, I mean, and then we kind of laughed about it a little bit and I understand yeah. what he's saying. And, and sometimes Hans and I, we feel like we have to find negative things to say. I mean, we're number one, it's our job to, to nitpick. All right. I mean, that's what we're doing, but at the same time, it's just kind of this menu deal. That is not something that would ever influence me um, or, 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 you know, keep me from buying this optic, but we're bringing it up because it is true. It's something we would like to see change, but it's not, we're, we're not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill and we are looking for, uh, any little thing that we see that we can say, Hey, this is going to be improved on. And we're trying to be honest about it. And I think this is one of those units that we've got to nitpick to find something wrong well, with. I and mean, yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, it, it is, you know, talking about uh, reviewing units and finding stuff that's wrong with it. You know, uh, like you and I spoke about before, we're only testing the best stuff out there on the market. That's you know, we're, we're testing the highest quality stuff. We are testing and reviewing this stuff and talking about the items that we uh, would personally use out in the field and recommend to other people. So, uh, you know, if we're not talking about it, then you know there's there's probably a reason and if we're talking about it at the same time there probably is a reason we're talking about because it's good stuff that's right and and we have let me tell you something i can find scopes right now um from manufacturers that we don't talk about 
and we could go pick one up and we could go do a review of it and we would trash it and we would trash the company we would trash the scope we could trash a lot of things about it but you know what what good does that do um, I know some people say well you could tell us and warn people that's true but I just kind of go back to the old you know if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all so yeah uh, I like well. to I like to review things that are good that that I yeah. can you know put my stamp of approval on and you know Hans the same way and you know there's gonna be times we disagree and we're gonna think some things maybe there is a major flaw or maybe there is something that we really just don't like but I think this is one of those units it is top of the line it is up there in you know what I say is the creme de la creme I mean it is <laughs> it is well, the the heated and cooled leather seats well, uh, I'm gonna and, say and this is it yeah and that's exactly right so uh, going back to that, if if you're not hearing about the product on this show, there's probably a good reason for it. So uh, that's uh, and it that doesn't always mean you know we're getting to new and different items, but sure uh, you know there, that's going to be uh, down the line and new stuff that continually comes out. And we're trying to get to everything, but you know we're 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 focusing on the quality stuff. But there was yeah. one more thing that I that I had uh, that you didn't mention that I would love to see built into this unit, and that's a internal video recorder ah oh, I, uh, oh, I did forget that yes and I, you know this is this is not an inexpensive uh digital unit i mean or i'm sorry thermal unit this is a you know this is fifty six hundred dollars uh this is 57. Uh, now 57 so at the same you know you're you're paying but at the same time you're getting a lot of quality you're getting a lot of uh um you know just high-end materials built into it product installed you know the BAE core, all that included, and this is Trigicon level stuff we're getting. But I would love to have it within. I'm a big fan of anything with internal video recorder. I agree. The more the more technology built into it to make the user interface as easy as possible. I love Bluetooth. I love Wi-Fi. And if we could find a way to incorporate that incorporate that into this higher end, uh, you know, thermal biocular, I would I would love to see that. So that's well, it. I agree. And and you know what, We're talking about testing all this stuff. I mean, we use this thing, played with it, really like it. I like the quality of it. It's not just a a good unit thrown into a you know crappy exterior. It's got a like I said, this rubberized housing. It's really nice. It's well done. Have no complaints. And so. Oh, what I did today was I talked to the guys over at Envision, and I said, "All right, we've had this thing over a month. We like it. We're impressed, and we want hey, to talk Jason, to you." Yes. Did you let them know that it passed the water submersion test that I tested it out on? <laughs> I hope you're joking. No, uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. Thank you, Envision. I did not test. Oh it out. man, I'm like, oh boy, what what have I got to pay for now? <laughs> no, but but I invited them to come on to the podcast. I said, you know, uh, to me, this is a product that is good enough that it passes the the smell test, the, the scratch test. I mean, this is it. I think that, that they're a company that I want to know more about. They're, uh, again, I don't know. I really don't know that much about them. So we're going to have them on the podcast in the coming weeks. We'll do an interview with them, and we're going to be learning a lot more about them and, and hopefully you know, kind of, uh, you know, let y'all learn about them too and bring them their name to the forefront. And maybe they've got some uh, more things coming. I, I really don't know. He, he told me they had some exciting news coming. Not sure what all that is, but we'll get them on the podcast and try to find out. But we really appreciate y'all listening to the show. Appreciate you listening to uh, this review. Again, it's the Envision Atlas. If you have an interest in this optic, feel free to give me a call at 877-350-1818. Uh, you can go to the website. And like I said, if it's not there by the time this podcast releases, it will be uh, very soon. We do have them available. So, uh, you know, just, just give us a call or send us an email. But again, thanks for listening to the podcast and tuning in every week. We appreciate your support. And we've already told you where to go find us, so go do that. Like, subscribe, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell everybody about it. And so we will, uh, good Lord willing, and the creek doesn't rise any more than it already has, uh, we will be here next week with a fun show, hopefully, with the wives of the uh, late night vision show there's and, there's no uh, hopefully about it they're coming on y'all stay well tuned. we may have to drag them on but against their will they may be here so <laughs> it's going to be fun and in the meantime y'all stay safe 
uh, out in the fields, shoot a bunch of cows, shoot a bunch of hogs, and uh, we appreciate you all listening. See you next week. <laughs>